amorphous silicon cells welcome to decreations resources so let's talk about amorphous silicon cells it's comparatively easy to produce amorphous silicon if you compare it to uh, crystalline silicon now amorphous silicon is also called alpha silicon so you might see that symbol alpha si now amorphous silicon is pure silicon which has no crystal properties as the name amorphous is attached you can immediately guess that and since it is not crystalline basically the atoms are randomly distributed the most common example of an amorphous substance is given in terms of glass now a film of silicon prepared by vacuum evaporation technique up to a substrate temperature of 600 degree celsius is amorphous these films as such can be used as optoelectronic devices because these contain large density of defects in the form of dangling bonds which act as recombination centers for photo generated charge carriers in 1969 it was the first time that uh, it was shown by chitik alexander and sterling that when amorphous silicon is produced by rf glow discharge decomposition of silane gas that is sih4 then it shows considerable level of photoconductivity it's believed that the silicon film so produced contain hydrogen which saturates dangling bonds on the internal microvoids of the film and at other defects of the in the structure and so the mixture of silane that is sih4 is reduced with phosphine ph3 and diborin that is b2h6 and then it is possible to produce n and p type hydrogenated amorphous silicon so it's written as alpha sih or even as a si colon h the discovery that the fermi level in a glow discharge produced uh, amorphous silicon that is asih can be moved up and down the band gap by doping like in a crystalline silicon solar cell opened up a potential application of amorphous semiconductors and fabrication of various devices including solar cells because these materials have high photoconductivity and high absorption of visible light where basically the optical band gap associated is of 1.55 eV and since large areas can be produced therefore low cost solar cells can be produced using th these films so with the first generation solar cells the silicon wafer based technology the main disadvantage is of cost so with amorphous silicon you are able to circumvent this problem about cost there are variety of methods for producing amorphous silicon films methods such as vacuum evaporation electrolytic deposition ion bombardment of single crystal silicon cathode sputtering the most widely preferred methodology is that of glow discharge decomposition of silane the radio frequency used here is around 13.56 megahertz dc and uh, the reactions involved are basically uh, silane reacting with ammonia to give hydrogenated si silicon nitride then silane that is sih4 reacting with diborane that is b2h6 and methane ch4 to give amorphous hydrogenated silicon carbide which is p type also silane can react with phosphine that is ph3 to give uh, n type amorphous hydrogenated silicon carbide so basically by using different gas mixtures different materials suitable for fabrication of uh, amorphous silicon can be produced since the process is plasma induced dissociation it's also sometimes called pecvd so the main points to remember in case of amorphous silicon solar cells are basically they are thin film cells they belong to the second generation because as we have already discussed the first generation is wafer based technology and their crystalline silicon is used as against that this is amorphous in nature and since it is amorphous in nature the atoms are arranged randomly 
Due to their flexibility, they can be utilized in many solar panels and they are also preferred for some low power applications like in calculators and they can have thickness of around 1 micrometer and the construction uh, of these solar cells is usually done by plasma enhanced chemical vapor deposition PECVD RF glow discharge and uh, this solar cell operates like others that is monocrystalline and polycrystalline solar cells of silicon so basic conversion of solar energy into electricity happens through photovoltaics and uh, when sun rays will fall on it it will absorb the energy from the sun rays and send it to the electrons in simple terms while the electrons will take the energy convert it into electric current and supply power to devices now what are the advantages of using these solar cells basically the factor of cost as we already mentioned it functions at a low manufacturing cost and uh, doesn't require too much area for uh, accommodation it's available in different shapes it can be used in light sensors it can uh, offer high charging efficiency as well it's highly flexible uh, but of course there are some disadvantages like the efficiency is low and it has a short lifespan so these are the disadvantages especially with respect to crystalline silicon wafer based solar cells but definitely this is an important option in the second generation solar cells